My name is Leslie and I work as a dietitian in a hospital. I am going to provide you today with some nutrition advice for parents of a preschool age child. The biggest concern that parents tell us is that their child or their toddler is not eating enough. Um, it's very common, but parents get oftentimes get very concerned when their child skips a meal or two meals in a row. So our first advice is don't panic. This is normal. However, there's some tips to try to get them to eat a little bit more. Um, the main thing is smaller stomachs need smaller amounts, obviously. So do not provide your toddler with a big plate of food, an adult-sized portion. They'll become overwhelmed. It's human nature for us to think we give our child a large variety of food or a big plate of food, hopefully they'll just eat a couple bites. But that's not the case usually. Usually that will turn them off, they will be overwhelmed, and they won't eat anything. So provide them very small amounts because you can always add more, a spoonful more later on. Also, it's very important for your child to have additional calories and protein and fat. So although your family may be eating low fat or low fat foods or low calorie foods, don't provide that for the toddler. They need the additional calories, protein, and fat. The best way to sneak in calories and protein and fat without having an overwhelming amount of volume for them is to slide in whole milk, mix that with your cream soups, add um, dry milk powder to your puddings. It doesn't increase the volume, but it adds an additional calories and protein, and they won't even know that you did that. Um, add cheeses to casserole. Instead of just giving them toast in the morning, add cheese on the toast and give them cheese toast. Slip in a little bit of peanut butter in their milkshakes. They won't even know that you did it, and it'll taste more rich, and it'll provide additional protein, calories, and fat for your child. Also, a big concern that we hear from patients, from parents, is that they, their child's not eating their vegetables. They usually do okay with fruits, they get it with their fruit juice or, or grapes or finger foods, but vegetables they tend to have a big problem with. So a good way to sneak in the vegetables without them turning their nose up at it is shredded carrots and macaroni and cheese. You can sneak in carrots that way and they won't even know it. Instead of cutting tomatoes and having big chunks of tomatoes, give them the small grape tomatoes. They're sweeter and they're finger foods and they'll typically eat those. Also, peanut butter on celery sticks. They'll get their vegetable in and they'll get their added protein in. So that's a good snack and a good way to hide, hide that it's a vegetable. Uh, additionally, ranch dressing, we call it liquid gold for the parent because put that ranch dressing on any vegetables, whether it's raw, veg raw broccoli or cooked broccoli, and children usually love that, especially school-aged children. If they can eat something with their finger or make it a fun shape, they tend to enjoy it more too. The second big concern that parents typically tell us is that their child will eat just one food over and over again and we call those food jags. Um, it's very common, it's nothing to be alarmed about. Over a period of time your child will get the vitamins and minerals and protein and calories that they need to strengthen their bones and to build their muscle tissue so don't panic about it too much. Um, if they ask for that grilled cheese at breakfast and then again they want it at lunch and then even again at dinner go ahead and provide it for them and don't worry about it. Over a week's time, they'll get the essential nutrients they, that they need to build their muscles. Um, but a way to introduce foods and try to get them out of that food jag is to offer them a new food first before you give them their food that they really enjoy. So if it's beets, for instance, offer the beet first and then if they turn their nose up to it, give them their grilled cheese or whatever their um, comfort food is that you know that they like. We want to avoid being a short order cook for your child. You don't want to cook five to ten different things just in order for them to eat something. So offer that new food one time. If they don't like it, then go back to the food that you know that they'll eat, that they enjoy. Um, commonly, you'll have to introduce the food seven to ten times on an average before they'll accept it. So don't give up after two or three times. Keep introducing that new food and eventually over those several periods of time your child will probably end up accepting it, especially 
if they see the rest of the family eating that food. And it won't be such a strange item to them. It'll become more common. They'll see their big brother or their mom and dad eating that food, and they'll want to start eating that food. So don't give up on, on a food item just because they didn't like it the first time you offered it to them. A good rule of thumb with providing the right portion size for your child is one tablespoon for each food item for each year of the child's age. So if the child's three years old, you'll offer them three tablespoons of each food item. Not to go over three to four items. You don't want to offer them seven different food items. So three to four items of food. So if they're a three-year-old, she or he will have three tablespoons of each food item. So if they've eaten three tablespoons of each food item, then you know you've done good and the rest is gravy and they're doing, doing great if they eat more than that. Another last bit of advice is about mixing food items. For some reason, children don't like food touching other food. They definitely don't like it if they're mixed together, um, for the most case. So casseroles might not be well received, especially if the food is unrecognizable to them. So if you leave your f the food that you provide them, if you have them separated, even if you want to invest in a plate that has compartment compartmental plates and leave the food untouched, it'll probably be better accepted. And in the long run, they'll eat more. Another thing that you want to really keep in mind is that you don't want to battle your child at the dinner table. You don't want them to feel that they're pressured to eat something or that they have to clean their plate or bribe them to eat all of their food. Over time, they're going to eat. If they're hungry, they're going to eat. If they feel full, they'll stop eating. There is no reason for them to have to feel that they have to clean their plate in order to make you happy. So offer them the new food, offer them the meal, and if they don't want to eat all of it, that's okay. Don't reward them with a candy bar or a sweet dessert if they haven't touched their meal, but let them make that choice. Let them decide, I want to eat this healthy food and I'll get a dessert after that. You can't replace my dessert with the meal. You're not going to replace their meal with a dessert, but don't make them feel that they ha that's their choice. They need to start making choices with their food items because soon they'll be making choices when they go off to school and they can pick from a vending machine what if they want to pick something healthy or not. So really don't make it a battle. If they're done eating, then they're done eating. If they haven't eaten anything at that meal, that's okay. They're going to get the calories and protein they need throughout the day or within a couple days of, of the food that you offer them. So definitely try to make it as peaceful and pleasant as possible. It'll be better for the child and it'll be better for the rest of the family to not pressure them to eat that meal.